you. How did you get started in this whole concept with a microphone and headphones? A mic in front of you and headphones on your head. How did all that get started? It's been an interesting journey. I I guess it started on Instagram because during COVID, like many of us uh, were, just kind of finding a new thing to do and a new outlet. And I got social and went on Instagram. And my my business was shut down, so I was navigating the loan programs that were being offered by uh, the government. So I was doing like the economic injury disaster loan, PPP loans for my company, and it was hard. And I thought to myself, man, I'm an attorney and I've been in business for eight years and I am struggling to navigate this new water and this loan programs. If I'm struggling, imagine how other people feel. Because I know a lot of small business owners are, you know, not, they don't have a business background. They don't have advanced degrees. They kind of just started doing something and it turned into a business and they're playing catch up on that end. So I started recording on my phone videos of me talking about the loans, what the benefits were and what the downfalls were, how to do it. And people were really responsive. They were asking me questions about how they I could help them or, you know, different nuances from different business industries. It was really great. It was fun for me to interact. I was using my legal degree and you know, I was just helping people. It was wonderful. And I just I just kept doing them because people told me, You're great on camera. You should be <laughs> helpful. Keep going. So I said, Okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> on my iPhone, like just selfies, right. you know? So then I got a selfie stand and I got a light <laughs> uh, and it okay. kind of started, you know, uh, moving forward in that direction until one right. day, a follower of mine who uh, had just been following me because he was interested, he is in real estate. And I guess at some point he transitioned um, into the podcast world and right. he wanted to, sh to highlight local businesses. So he uh -huh. asked me, would you come on and talk about your business, but also the whole loan thing that you've been discussing on Instagram? And I was like, okay, I've never done a podcast, but sure. And that was my first podcast. It was the Dean Miller podcast called Opportunity Knocks. He's a great guy. Like I said, he has a real estate background. And now he interviews a lot of people. And, and through him, I met a lot of people. I met um, Tom Keenan, who is a business coach. And he is also an author, best-selling author. I met uh, Steve Murphy, who is the owner of Murphy's famous Bloody Mary mix. Uh, wow. and I met Chef Jonathan's, who is a chef, but uh, as the name suggests. So I've really met some interesting people through that podcast. And then once Dean put our podcast up on his social media websites and Spotify, then I started getting a lot of interest in having me on as a host. Um, I'm sorry, not a host, but a guest on various okay. podcasts. Okay, so when did when did that happen? Well, you, what, what was that? A month ago? Two months ago? It pro was. Let's see. It must have been the end of August that wow, I met of Dean. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, I started to get some um, people reaching out to me, asking me if I want to be a host. You're one of them. Oh, so, I'm so I'm sorry, honored. I keep saying the word host, but I mean guest. Sorry. No, yes. no. Actually, actually, you were <laughs> actually you you were the star. I know, because I got the DMs back, and everybody was happy to, <laughs> to see to see you. And, and a few of a few of the, the DMs joked and said, "Hey, you should have our own show." <laughs> they, and maybe I will. Well, hey, people well, have been saying that, so who knows what the future holds? Yeah. They were but, serious. I said they were joking, but they were jokingly serious, is what I'm saying. They said, "Hey, she could have her own show." So, hey, you should have your own show, Jesse. Thank you. Maybe that will be in the works. I'm not opposed to that. Okay. I'm learning as I go. You know, it was only it was only like six weeks ago that this happened. So, and since I've gotten some traction since I've been on um, Tom Laidlaw's podcast, which is called True Grit. And he's a former NHL player, and he was also on Survivor. He's a really great guy. We have a lot of similarities in the way that we think, and I think that's what attracted him to me appear on his podcast. And I'm probably going to be on as a regular, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you so, would make you would make any podcast really work. Just just looking at it, or 
Are you opposed to being, because uh, there are some, professional podcast host, uh, podcast uh, guests? You would be an awesome podcast guest for anybody's podcast. Would Thank you. Be you. Oppo- would you be opposed to that? I would love that. No, I would love it. I actually, I'm on with someone new tomorrow, too. Uh, a woman. It'll be my oh. first Okay. That I've been really used to okay. being on camera. Okay. All right. And and you have you have a good rapport with your audience that is not right in front of you. You 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 have a good connection even though they're not right in front of you. Uh, you're able to talk to people uh, via whatever whatever platform you're talking in, whether it's an Instagram live or whether it's through a Zoom format. But I have to ask Thanks. you now. I have to ask you. It's been a short time and it's been a relatively busy time that people find you and they're interested in doing a podcast with you or other things as a guest. What's your private life like? <laughs> the thing is, you kind of see it. You know, <laughs> if you follow me, you, you see a lot of it. Uh, my life is busy. You know, I wake yeah. up every day at 5 a.m. I exercise. That is super important to me to start my day that way. I think it just sets the tone for the rest of my day. I do cardio, I do some yoga, I meditate, even if it's just for five minutes, that's how I start my day. And from there, that's about the only um, low key quiet time I really get because my kids are little, they wake up, I have to take them to school or, you know, take them to their various activities and stuff like that. And I try to work and do do podcasts and legal Mm -hmm. work and run my businesses while they're at school. And then we have, you know, homework and dinner and then more work for me on the computer. So it's a busy life. Um, It's a great life, but it's a busy life. And it just keeps getting busier. (laughs) So now how do you, that's your quiet time at 5 a.m. in the morning. What do you recommend to, uh, to the ladies out there, to the women that are listening uh, how they can kind of pull this all together. What if you had to give someone three, the top three things that you could you could recommend to someone if they wanted to venture down this journey that you're taking of growth and empowerment? What would you say to them? Well, it's hard to choose three because I think it's very customized for the individual. But I could tell you that for me. What helped me pull my life together when I was kind of in a chaotic moment was having a routine that started my day with something healthy and invigorating, which is Mm -hmm. exercise. For me, that was my anchor. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm generalizing too much when I say that most of us find it hard to be disciplined and find a routine that works for them. And I think waking up early is a great route to go because for me, I'm a single mom and I wasn't always. So that was new to me. I was waking up at seven o'clock right around the time I'd wake up my kids for school. And that was insane. And I just thought, you know, the thought of waking up at five instead of seven also sounds insane. But what happened was I ended up having this time where I could start my day you know, start my mind going, think about what I had to do for the day without text coming through, without being um, bothered on social media, without my staff contacting me, without phone calls interrupting my thought, without my kids interrupting my thought process. It was just like a time for me to gather my thoughts for the day and start my day off in a very tranquil way. And I would recommend that to a lot of people because it was life transforming for me. That was a big moment. When you have when you have these two things going for you, getting up early, as you mentioned, uh, the exercise you mentioned, um, you're you're pretty much um, you're pretty much having a control over your life more than the life having control over you. Yes, that's a great how, way to put it. How do, how does how does that affect your demeanor then when you interact with your children or other people? It improved it. I mean, I noticed myself waking up at the same time as them. I was like, where's my coffee? What I have to think? I can't think. I don't know. I have to do something. It was so disorganized. It was like, wait, it's 
basically like waking up next to a lake versus like waking up in a tornado. Oh, wow. You know, okay. I feel That's a great like way to put it. My demeanor changed a lot. My, I'm just when my kids now wake up at seven for school, they're like, they get this awesome mom who's like, hey, let's have breakfast. Let's sit down, you know, let's get up and get motivated. Yeah. Whereas before I was like, you know, the stereotypical mom with the hair crazy. And <laughs> okay. I think it no, changed my life. It did. No offense to all those women that hear this and their hair is crazy. Uh, I you mean, can't, my hair is crazy still got, sometimes at no. seven o'clock. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but, it's not perfect. Right. It's not a, nothing's perfect. It's not a perfect right, right. method. Right. It's just something that helped me. And that's not true for everybody. Like I have friends that I told this to and they're like, there's no way I'm waking up at five because right. at 10 o'clock, you know, nine, nine and 10 o'clock is where I shine. And that's great. Like, I think, so the third thing, right, would be to be honest with yourself and know where you're strong and where you're not. For me, I'm not strong at night. Don't call me at 10 o'clock. You know, I can't <laughs> think straight at that point. Right. But for many, it's the reverse, right? Like they wake up at seven, eight o'clock, but at, you know, from eight to 11 p.m., they're killing it. <laughs> okay. So you right. have to, rec no judgment. You know, this is my yeah. personal view for my right, life, right, but right. whatever works for you, find that and capitalize on it, whatever that means staying up later, waking up earlier. Right. And in, and in the process of doing that, your children, uh, they've seen you become a different person, as it were, but you're, you're still the same mom. I don't know if I'm the same mom. I think I'm a ah, better mom okay. now than I was before because, ah. you know, to give yourself to someone else, whether that is a piece of you as a mom or a parent or a wife or a husband or a partner or a friend, in order to give that piece, you have to be really rock solid within yourself or you have no pieces to give. So as selfish as it might seem to take some time for yourself or, you know, stop going out for drinks with your friends because you need to organize yourself, you know, like you, you, I feel guilty. I don't know. Maybe other people do too. If I turn down an invitation to be with the people that I care about, because obviously I want to be with them, right, right. but if I don't take care of me, no one's getting a piece of me because what do I have to give? You know, you have to be strong in within yourself and then you can be the, the mother, the parent, the spouse, the friend that you want to be.